the first part of Shining a Light on Stillbirth, we talked about what stillbirth is and the fact that it is a maternal health issue that continuously gets ignored. In 2009, the CDC acknowledged that stillbirth remained a quote, major, but often overlooked public health problem and stillbirth rates have hardly changed over the last 30 years. Today, in part two, we'll hear from the Clevengers, who had a stillborn son. We'll also hear from a therapist about the trauma a stillbirth causes. Madison and Jake Clevenger were expecting their first child back in 2021. She was put on medication for her blood pressure, but there were no other problems during her pregnancy. When she went in for her 39-week checkup, there was no heartbeat. For me, the hardest part was the night between like finding out at the doctor's office there was no heartbeat and waiting to go in to deliver him. Because like as a pregnant mother, just knowing that my baby was dead and I was still carrying him was something that was like my brain like was not processing. She had a C-section the next day. I remember getting wheeled down to the operating room, very visibly pregnant, full-term pregnant, and people just smiling at me like, oh, she's going to deliver her baby, and being so worried that someone was gonna say, are we having a baby today, or something like that, and I wasn't gonna know how to respond. Jack Daniel Clevenger was born on October 8th. He was everything she and her husband had hoped for. He was born about roughly one o'clock, mm -hmm with a head full of black hair. Everyone joked about his mohawk. He was beautiful. Mm -hmm. He looked perfect. And that was something that we were scared about too. We weren't sure what to expect um, when he was born, but he just looked like any other baby. Yeah. Adorable. Exactly what I pictured he would look like. Madison and her husband said they felt like no one else knew what they were going through. The number one thing you're thinking is like everybody else's baby gets to live. Right. Everybody else's pregnancy ends fine. And that's not the case, but just, it's not, it's not. And again, no point did anyone ever say to us, this, like, this could happen. Stillbirth can be a traumatic experience that can lead to a range of mental health issues for both mothers and fathers. According to a case control study, almost 50% of women who experienced a stillbirth reported high levels of depression and anxiety. Dr. Marilyn Pascarelli at Westbrook Health Services has been a therapist for 40 years and has counseled women who have had a stillborn baby. Many women who experience stillbirths can still go through postpartum depression. It's a very, very tough time time and a time to be very vigilant about any kind of symptoms, particularly of depression and anxiety. She says stillbirth can affect the whole family. I think sometimes when women um, are affected by a stillbirth, we think, oh, the mom, the mom, but it's also, you know, the father, the partner, the grandparents, siblings. I mean, everybody's waiting to bring this bundle of joy home. It's such an, it's such an exciting moment, and it's such a disappointing moment because there's no baby to bring home. Madison and her husband said being open about what happened helped them heal. I talk about it a lot. I'm very open about it. To me, it's just like second nature to talk about our son. Um, I talk about him when I talk about our other children, just the same way. Dr. Pascarelli agrees. Talking about what happened is a healthy way to process the pain. And so often people just hush hush about it and that's the worst thing. You know, find your support system. What are your protective factors? Is it your church family? Is it your friends? Is it a group? Very important to talk and, and grieve. Grief takes a long time. Madison and her husband said their stillborn son Jack will always be a part of their family and they'll keep talking about him. And we will make sure that our other children know that they have a big brother and that someone's missing. <laughs> the Clevengers now have a young daughter named Nora. In part three of Shining a Light on Stillbirth, we'll tell you about the act that passed this summer that hopes to bring down the number of stillbirths in the U.S. and the other piece of legislation that is working its way through Congress. <laughs> 